welcome to all myself dr resh pande is having double post graduation also in law and ophthalmology so i will be speaking on criminal liabilities of the ophthalmologist previously the civil liabilities is being nicely covered and uh, the criminal liability is totally different medical negligence is both civil and criminal law so negligence can be a for criminal wrong or a civil but how to differentiate is that is laid down by many courts it is punishable either by compensation as in civil case or with imprisonment or fine as a criminal case we have seen there is a damages and damages pay to the patient so patients are more interested in civil cases rather than the criminal because they don't get anything out of that criminal case except the revenge and nothing and nothing else so the patients which are really troubled or which are really upset they will go to the criminal cases and they will not go to the civil in that case the criminal case even fine is charged to the doctor doesn't go to the patient it goes to the government so actually speaking the case is against the doctor and the state and not against the doctor and the patient but only he files it or the police files it and the case runs so intention of the patient is definitely revenge and not of getting the money negligence of doctor is the only foundation on which either criminal case or civil case are based however if the negligence is not gross a criminal complaint is not maintainable so court can dismiss the complaint if the negligence is not gross in malay kumar ganguly's case stated the supreme court has stated that for negligence to amount to a offense the element of mens rea that is intention to cause the assault must be shown to exist for an act to amount to a criminal negligence now i can ask who which doctor will desire that my patient i should be spoiled because my intention should be there to spoil my patient's eye or I, i my intention is that my patient should be troubled no doctor will do so there is a no mens rea so it is a very very difficult to prove that there is the intention of the doctor to cause the assault to the patient and unless it is established clinical uh, criminal case cannot go ahead unless you have to prove the other party or the government police has to prove that there is a gross negligence which doctor has done and because of that only the patient has suffered in supreme court in jacob mathus case the opposed to this ordinary negligence gross negligence is defined by the supreme court that negligence must be of high degree as my colleague said that the difference is there high degree difference it speaks of its own the doctor did something or failed to do something which in the given facts and commissioner no medical professional in his ordinary sense or prudence would do have done or failed to do so he has uh, narrated very nicely and in detail so i will not go in detail because whatever he has said is very very uh, informative ipc sections section 82 and 92 the ipc provide for exemption for acts done in good faith for benefit of a person so whenever doctor is doing anything and happens something else this act 88 and 92 protects the doctor against that criminal assault the section 88 act not intended to cause death done by consent in good faith for person's benefit so patient has given the consent that operate doctor you have told that better uh, i can die in the operation also and really the patient dies then it comes the 88 comes in your help that there was a risk of the uh, and patient has given the consent so uh, doctor is saved in that case because doctor's intention is not to kill the patient neither his intention is to do the negligence section 92 act done in good faith for benefit of a person without consent when the patient has come to you probably uh, in ophthalmology uh, it is not the thing only the uh, saving of the eye but in other 
things. The saving of the life is there. When the patient comes to the doctor, the doctor has to take the decision. Even there is a no consent, I will operate this patient and save this patient. And that if the patient dies or has sustained damages, he is protected with the section 92. In civil cases, as I will say, no any type of consent, whichever you take and howsoever you take, it doesn't protect you against the CPA. Because the consent has given you the permission that complications can happen and uh, the things can go wrong and uh, the modes of treatment that you decide. But per, uh, consent has not given you the permission of neg doing the negligence. And the case is dependent upon the negligence and not on the complications which are mentioned in the textbooks. So this clause is very, very important. Whatever is mentioned in textbooks or prevailing practice modern methodology or journals is not a negligence. Only if you are not able to that detect that negligence and treat well is really the negligence. So police statement, police can come to hospital and do inquiry, can record the statement but it should not be signed. So many people may not be knowing that the uh, police record should not be signed. If they are signed, it may be produced in the court by opposite party as evidence, but it has no value. Still, it acts upon some way or other way to the influence of judges. So it should not be signed. Police can call anybody to the police station. We have to go to the police station, but women should not be called after the 6 p.m. till the morning. Police can ask the documents for inspection. Doctor should cooperate. Documents can be seized by police if off offense is registered. Now, whenever police comes, they cannot seize your documents. They can see only. If a fire is registered, then only. Or if there are orders from the court, or the case is standing and court has issued the order to collect the documents, then only police can seize the documents. In that condition, insist on doing the seizure panchanama because that panchanama will have the record how many documents or what documents they are taking from you. You can have the uh, Xerox copies with you. Uh, before that, you don't hand over the uh, documents to the police. So that panchanama is very must and the copy of that panchanama should be given to the doctor. The table death. To make doctors safe, uh, it is not a mandatory. I am again saying the things which are I am mentioning it. It is for the safety of the doctor who is operating. It is handing over of his liabilities to somebody else's head. So it is always safe to have physical fitness from an MD physician, so that you are not bothered. The patient uh, advocate saying in the court that doctor has not done the negligence, he has not recorded diabetes, he has not recorded ischemic heart disease and so the patient has died. If the fitness is there, straight away the doctor can say that fitness of the physician, MD physician is there, you ask him the questions. And court will never ask any question to the physician because he has no intention to give the false certificate or false decision. Always have a qualified stand by anesthetist. So many our doctors are operating on topical. The anesthetist has no nothing to do just to sit by the side. But why we are paying them? We are paying them for the transfer of responsibility if anything happens on his head. So if the standby anesthetist is there, everything happens about the body including the death is on his head and not on the head of the ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist is only concerned with his orbit and eye. That's all. And orbit and eye cannot cause a death on the table. Neither he can it can cause any damage to the uh, life or paralysis or something, something like that, which systemic diseases disabled the person. Only the thing here, the eye may be lost. That is the complication which is safeguarded in the law. So the standing stand by anesthetist is there to share other responsibilities. If he is not there, the court will ask you the question. Doctor, when you are operating, uh, the patient uh, gone in uh, shock or vasovagal, 
and his BP fall. Are you able to stop your operation and treat? Yes, I will stop the operation and treat. Are you uh, accustomed to treat such patients? Are you MD in physician or are you managing the emergencies? No, then that is negligence. So, for this purposes, immediately he can say the anesthetist is there, he will look after the body and if he has not looked after the, that is his responsibility and if he is present, he is not blamed for even the death because he is supposed to manage that and he manage it well, it is accepted by the court. So, OT should have oxygen cylinder. How many times it is alleged, oxygen was not there and when it was opened, it was empty. So, court is not going to come in your hospital and see the oxygen cylinders. It will pro require produce the document and that document is the receipt of refilling of the oxygen. If you have a uh, refilling of oxygen, you are safe that oxygen was there. Whether it was there or not is not concerned to the court because court depends upon only evidences and nothing, nothing else. Written informed consent in patient language. This is a very, very important in criminal cases. It has no value in civil cases because I already said no consent has allowed you to do the negligence. Because it saves that a doctor has forcefully operated or forcefully done the things, interventional things. So it should be in his language. The table death, stop the surgery and try to resuscitate with the help of the anesthetist. Call physical or shift to the ICU if possible. Inform police. Insist on postmortem. This is a very very important uh, important thing. Postmortem. Whenever a death occurs in your hospital within 24 hours in the admission of the patient or where you are not able to give the cause of the death of the patient or the death has occurred on the table during the surgery or interventional. You just write a letter of information to the police station that such and such uh, incidents has happened in my hospital, such and such person has died and please do the post button and make a duplicate copy of it, receive the received signature from the police station with the date and time and then you are free. Many times doctors forget to do this and where the patient requests that uh, let me uh, take the body, uh, it is old person, we agree, you have done the efforts, you know, even you have not taken the bills, but now we don't want that the body should be disturbed and we hand over. And we, humanitary point of view, hand over the body and after 10-15 days after the crimination, somebody comes and files a case. The doctor has done the negligence and caused the, the death of the, my uh, parent or something and uh, there was uh, uh, police and uh, everything was together and so... Uh, criminal cases filed and doctor is nowhere in that condition. If it is handed over police postmortem, whether the postmortem is done or not, is the responsibility of the police and not the doctor. So, best way to uh, console the patient's relatives, uh, I have done my job, I have informed the police, now you and your police uh, do whatever you want, whether to do the postmortem or not to do, you decide yourself, I am not there. But you have made yourself safe and then you have said this thing. So it is always very important. So table death, apart from this, informed in um, uh, administrator, unit in charge, superintendent of the hospital in a corporate hospital. Insist on postmortem there also in the line. And the causing death by doing a rash and negligent act, the table death is generally inquired under 304A. A fire is registered. As soon as the death occurs, a fire is registered. But doctor is not arrested, though a cognizable offence is a bailable offence. My colleague has said how the doctor is not arrested. Uh, because there is Jacob Matthews versus State of Punjab. The Supreme Court has given the decision that the doctor should not be arrested under section 304A unless opinion is taken from an expert doctor or a committee of doctors expert in that field. So, the doctor is never arrested immediately unless an opinion is taken. So, Supreme Court in case of Suresh Gupta and government of NCT of Delhi, uh, it is held that for every mishap 
or death during medical treatment the medical man cannot be proceeded against for punishment so it has given a very good protection to our doctors and jacob mathus case private complaint may not be entertained unless the complainant has produced before the court the opinion of another competent doctor to support the charge of the rashness or negligence on the part of that accused person that is also mentioned by my colleague the investigating officer before proceeding against the doctor accused of rash and uh, um, rash and comp- competent and medical